I had it. I a bit, but um. <laughs> Hey, it's Sue and Megan, the Spine Breakers, and today we are gonna do a January wrap up because January is fucking finally over. Yes, thank God. <sighs> I think you need an extra pillow in your. <laughs> Ta da! That's better. I am not quite so short. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I finished four books and I DNF'd one, so I'll briefly talk about the one I DNF'd as well. And I finished three books. I could have finished four, but I didn't. <laughs> so, and we're gonna drink this coffee stout from Ingrained Brewery and Restaurant, which is in Springfield, Illinois. So I went there briefly to, to distribute kitties. To transport some kittens <laughs> to their new mother. <laughs> yes. So I have these fancy ass beer glasses from my dad and stepmom that they got on their honeymoon in Sonoma, California. And so we're gonna drink this out of them. Does it all fit? It does. Right. With like a, a nice little amount of head on there too. Oh, I kind of messed mine up. Didn't get very much head, but. It's not bad. It tastes very coffee-y. It does, and it's not like as rich. Does yeah. that make sense? But it does taste very strongly of coffee. Mm -hmm. But it's not bad. Mm -mm. It's not great. It's not the best coffee stop I've ever had, for sure. I don't love it, but it's <laughs> not bad. But it's okay. Yeah. Well, why don't you go first since you read Moss books? The first book that I finished was Aristotle and Dante Discovered the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Aliure Sainz. I looked up how to say his name, but that was okay. several days ago. But I'm pretty sure <laughs> that that was how it said. But uh, yeah, this is super hyped on BookTube. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably heard of it. I It was picked, chosen for my book club. Otherwise, like I probably wouldn't have read it just because it wasn't really... It just wasn't something that was on my TBR. Mm -hmm. But it's about uh, two teenage boys. Main, the main character is Aristotle, and he's kind of... It's set in the 80s, and he's like very angsty. He has issues with his um, family, um, issues with just being isolated. He doesn't really have any friends. And then he meets Dante, who's like the opposite of him in a lot of ways. Dante's very open and mm -hmm. he and his parents have a very loving relationship. And um, Aristotle and Dante become very close. Oh. <laughs> and I've heard mostly just glowing reviews of this, but I have heard a few people say that they really hated this book. And I fell, as I usually do in these instances, <laughs> I kind of fell in the middle because I really enjoyed reading it. And it is one of those books that like at the end you feel so happy, like your heart is happy and right. you're like, oh, so wonderful. But then when I really thought about like all the things, there was a lot of things in the book that bothered me. <laughs> Um, one being like the writing style at the beginning, like it almost read more like a middle grade book mm -hmm. than a YA book. Um, so I even questioned at one point, like, is this middle grade? <laughs> and then I was like, no, they're like 15 in the beginning. But the writing, I, that kind of went away after like the first maybe quarter of the book or so. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that was about. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should say because I don't want to be like spoilery, but like there's two scenes that I thought were problematic okay. I'll say okay. and I'm very surprised that like booktube has like let that slide mm. for the most part I have heard some people talk about it but there's like a, a kissing scene that I thought was like very dubious consent I suppose oh. and then there's a scene where like Aristotle's parents like sit him down and tell him how he feels oh. and I was kind of like mm, come on um, but I also understand why people love it because it's like a happy gay romance story. Yeah. Which is like, unfortunately, kind of few and far between a lot of times, you know, stories with gay protagonists end in tragedy or right. something. Looking at you fucking a little life. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, I, you know, like on the one hand, I understand why people love it. And it was published in 2012, so there was probably even less stories like that yeah. back then. So I get that, but I'm also like kind of surprised that people 
were okay with those things right. in the book right. that a lot of people were. But um, yeah, I ended up giving it three stars because like I enjoyed reading it, but there was just those few things that I kind of took issue with. That's fair. So the first book that I finished was Three Women by Lisa Tadeo which came in a book of the month club box and I got this one because like I picked this one for book of the month club because it seemed a little saucy and because it's about so this lady saucy. saucy this is a non-fiction story and it's supposed to be about like well it is about the sex not really you know what no not really <laughs> it's supposed to be about the sex lives of these three different women over the course of several years their stories are told so I don't really, I didn't really love this book. It doesn't read like nonfiction, which is fine. Um, that doesn't bother me. But the women that were chosen for this book are very, um, not very diverse. They're all like white women. And so. Straight white women? Or? Ish. Ish. Okay. I mean, two of them, two out of the three are, yes, yeah, straight. And the third one, I don't know how she would identify. I think probably is bisexual based on her tale but like the issue that i had is like so the, in the introduction it talks about how lisa today was going to originally write about like sexuality and then she explained that like male sexuality is really not that interesting to her and so she <laughs> which i get so she wanted to like research female sexuality because she thought it was like more multifaceted and more complicated and um I don't know that she did a great job of researching anything of like the stories of these three women doesn't really explore their sexuality so much as like how their sexuality is weaponized against them by men. I just felt like angry a lot when I was reading this <laughs> and I don't know if like that was the point but like I don't think that's a very empowering message to say that like women have this you know women have their sexuality in the, in the way they express it but like men are going to take advantage of that like I think it's more empowering to say that like you get to decide what to do with it with mm -hmm. your sexuality and like how to yeah you know express it but so yeah I don't want to go on for too long but like I didn't love this book I think I gave it two stars wah, wah. Wah, wah. and I haven't really like paid attention <clears throat> to if other people have talked about this or not so I don't really know what the general I've, consensus is I've heard a little bit about it and I uh, I've heard pretty mixed things like a lot of people felt the same way you did I think but mm -hmm. some people like absolutely loved it I mean it's saucy like there's yeah. some tea in there right and so like that's fine like if you want to read about some tea uh the next book I finished was nothing to see here by Kevin Wilson and I listened to it on audiobook which I would recommend for this one I mean it's probably good if you read it physically too but I enjoyed the audiobook but this is about a woman who um gets a call from one of her best friends who's very her best friend is very rich and is like married to a senator and all that the main character whose name is escaping me now <laughs> but she like grew up poor and, and doesn't you know have the privileged life that her her friend does but her friend calls her and said wants her to come see her and she goes there and her friend asks her if she will basically be like a nanny for her husband's it's her stepchildren so it's her husband's okay. two kids from a previous marry marriage who um spontaneously combust like they the they will, yeah <laughs> it seems like a normal book and then you're like the children catch on fire they catch on fire like it like doesn't hurt them do. it doesn't hurt them to do it okay but you know they'll burn other people or burn buildings down or whatever do like, they have any control over when they catch on fire somewhat okay Cause especially the girl it's a girl and a boy and the girl is like has she, she's older i think or are they twins i don't remember but she's definitely like the sort of the dominant one and is more um she has more control over it and stuff yeah i just i really enjoyed it i listened to it pretty much the whole way and back from when i was going to springfield illinois nice <laughs> And um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was really good. Um, and I really liked the narrator of the audiobook. Her name was Marin Ireland. Um, I thought she did a great job she does, of doing like, sometimes I feel like people go like a little too over the top with doing different voices for different characters. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she did like subtle changes to where you knew, like you could distinguish each character's voice, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like super over the top right that makes sense <laughs> you know so i thought she did a really good job but 
yeah, I really liked it. I gave it four stars. Very cool. Okay, so the next book I finished was also an audiobook, and it is The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers um, by Maxwell King. And what I will say is that it was read by LeVar Burton, which was really fucking cool, because, like, LeVar Burton is a gem, mm -hmm. and we should all be very grateful for him. <laughs> um, but, but other than that, like, I really didn't care for the book too much. Some of it was really interesting, but it was pretty repetitive. Like, it didn't hold my attention super well, which, like, mm -hmm. part of that's my fault and part of it's the book's fault, I think, because I have ADHD and my mind wanders, but... Um, a good audiobook, like some of the ones I've listened to previously have like totally held my attention. So I think it's probably a mix of the two, but, um, so it was okay. I gave it three stars and I know they just made it into a movie not too long ago with Tom Hanks in it. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see that movie because I think that might actually be more enjoyable than this book was, but, yeah. um, cause Tom Hanks is kind of also a gem. Right. But yeah. So like yeah, LeVar Burton, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers is a gem. He was a, like, Presbyterian minister, mm -hmm. which I didn't know until I listened to the book. But yeah, he went through and they wanted him to take, or Episcopal minister? Some kind of fucking minister. <laughs> and they wanted him to take like a church and be a pastor and like preach and stuff, but he was really nervous doing public speaking and he wanted to keep doing his kid show. And so one of his friends like made a plea to the elders of the church or whatever to like let him do his ministry his way. And they were like cool with that. That's cool. Yeah. So fun fact. Contact. Read the, read the book if you want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> or listen to LeVar Burton read it to you, which was very delightful. Uh, the next one I finished was The Midwitch Cuckoos by John Wyndham. Uh, I won't talk too much about it here because I've uh, we already talked about it. I've already talked about it twice. <laughs> um, oh, I'm still still there. Because I did a video where I reviewed this as well as the two movie adaptations, which are called Village of the Damned. Um, and then we also, our video last week was about the first challenge from our, if you've got it, read it, um, reading challenge. And so I talked about it in that video. Yes. Also. Boom. Um, but I really liked this. Um, four stars. John Wyndham. Solid writer. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, so next I finished, the last book I finished this month was American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Um, which I won't talk about too much because we talked about it in our first challenge video. But I really loved this. And I was really surprised that I loved this because it was Neil Gaiman. And I have a kind of, I have mixed feelings about Neil Gaiman. So I loved this. I thought it was really good. I started watching the TV show, which is different in some critical ways. And I don't know how I feel about it, hmm. but is good. So, okay. I gave this four stars. Um, next I'll talk about the book I DNF'd, which was Emotionally Weird by Kate Atkinson. And this is about uh, a woman who is in grad school for literature, I think, or writing. I don't know. This book seemed to be not about much. <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of why I DNF'd it. I got like, I think like 130 pages into it or so. And I just was like... I didn't care. It wasn't bad mm -hmm. necessarily. Like it was amusing, but a lot of the things I was thinking about it, like a lot of the reasons I wasn't enjoying it were things like when I looked on Goodreads at other reviews, like the people who didn't like it very much said those th same things about mm -hmm. it. So I was like, seems like that's a, doesn't change. <laughs> you right. know, like, like that's not, not gonna get any better. It's not gonna get better. So I was like, eh, I'm just going to DNF it because I didn't see it being above like a three star read for me. And That's I didn't want to waste my time on it. Life is short, man. Life yeah. is too short to read shitty stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's all I read. I am almost done with our second challenge. I'm reading the Plant City book. It's called TA. And I'm also currently reading um, Audrey Lord. What's the name of that? Sister Outsider. Sister Outsider by Audrey Lord. So those are the two that I'm currently working on. I have one more book that I finished. He is straight up sniffing your titty. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I read Monstrous Volume 4, The Chosen by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. This is a graphic novel that is about this woman who has like a monster living inside her basically. Um, and there's also this whole overarching story about a war happening um, between her people and 
I think it's Humans and Arcanics, and she's an Arcanic, or Arcanic, I don't know how you pronounce it. I've really been enjoying this series. I didn't love the first volume, but I've really liked the other three volumes that I've read. Um, and the art, as I say every it's single stunning. time, it's the beautiful. art is absolutely beautiful. Um, I would almost, even if I didn't like the story, I would almost buy it <laughs> just, just for the, for the art. art. But I do enjoy the story. I will say that it, it it's a little bit difficult for me at least to um, keep track of what's going on. I think it's maybe <laughs> something that like once it's done and, and the story is finished, I might like reread it all in succession because there's a lot of characters and a lot of stuff going on um, that's a little bit difficult to keep track of. But um, I really like it. I think it's good. Four stars. Four stars. And that was all I read. Boom. So it was a pretty decent reading month, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't love the books I, I read except for American Gods. So like, you know, a third of the books I, re I read. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had a pretty good month, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, I DNF'd one, but at least I didn't Waste force myself to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. I Although I am struggling a little bit with the book I'm reading right now, but it's for our challenge. And um, so I'm like, I don't really want to DNF it. I'm, it's getting a little better. I'm not that far in it. I'm only like 50, 50 some pages in. But it's getting a little more interesting. Okay. Well, so hopefully good. it'll pick up. But yeah, I'm reading The Lost Queen of Egypt. That's what it's called. So this Messy. beer is pretty decent. Yeah, I, I definitely have like, you know, kind of acclimated my mm -hmm. taste buds to it. And it's less strong. Mm -hmm. tasting as it was at the beginning. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, pro it's probably not like one of my favorite coffee stouts, but it's really not bad. But it's not bad. No. It's not the worst coffee stout I've had, for sure. Oh god, not by a lot. But it's shot. also not the best. <laughs> that is going to be it for us. Um, let us know how you did in the month of January. Janvier. The year of January. The year. Seems <laughs> like it. <laughs> Felt like a year. Felt like 900 <laughs> days. Yeah. Yeah. So... All right, well, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!